Have you ever experienced the feeling that something's just missing? Maybe you're forgetting something, something's just missing, like Diane and I, we packed to go to Dallas a week ago, and, and you just, you got this feeling that you've missed something. Something's missing, you don't have it all. And you never quite feel right, and then you land in Dallas, and you go to the people's place that you're staying at, and you figure it out. It's too late, but you figured it out. You know, but you think about it, and you think about it, and that feeling doesn't seem to go away. And you keep looking for what's missing. Sometimes you find it, and when you do, you're happy and you're overjoyed. When you don't find it, you kind of, well, I guess I'll figure it out eventually. Well, when Jesus came to earth, he came and he began his ministry, he came preaching the truth about God and the truth about life. He was very purpose driven. He had a mission. The God the Father gave him a mission and he was going to fulfill that mission. He was the light of the, the light of life. He was the grace of God. He was the truth. And while Jesus went around being all of this. He kept looking for something. He was looking for something and he had a hard time finding it. He was searching for it and searching for it. He was watching everywhere he went to see if he would see it or if he would find it. And so this morning I want you to follow along with me and see if we can discover what the missing ingredient was that Jesus was looking for. You know, Jesus came along, he did some miracles, he did a lot of miracles. He did some miracles that were just mind-boggling. They were amazing. I mean, have you ever seen anybody walk on water? He did that. He uh, called Lazarus out of the grave that had been dead four days. He just called him out of the grave and he came out <coughs> in his grave clothes. I don't know if you've ever thought about that or pictured that. He's bundled up and he walked out of the grave. Now, I don't know whether he was able to shed all the grave clothes, but I think it says take those things off of him when he comes out. So I don't know if he came floating out of the tomb or how that was, but he came out of that tomb alive. He did all of these things. He, he healed the sick. And the Pharisees, the religious leaders of that day, they came to him Time after time, they said, but we want to see a sign. Can you imagine what Jesus would have thought of that, at that comment? I've just given you so many. What do you need a sign for? What do you need another sign for? They came to him with questions. And he answered their questions. They came to him and they tried to trap him, to set him up. And they couldn't do that. You would think they would get the point. But they rejected him. They actually hated him with a hatred enough to murder. <coughs> now, I don't know what they were thinking when they heard the Sermon on the Mount and he says, you know, you heard it said don't murder, but I'm saying don't even be angry. I wonder what they were thinking about when he said that. They were missing something. Nicodemus comes to Jesus in John chapter 3. And Jesus answers his question, and he's baffled. And he walks away kind of baffled about the whole situation. But he got his question answered. And they kept coming at him and kept coming at him, and so he called them out on occasion. John chapter 8, the woman caught in adultery. They came to set a trap, and he didn't get caught in that trap. He called them out on their sin. And he called them hypocrites. And he called them all kinds of things. Because all they were bent on doing was murdering him. They produced lies and deceptions. His own family. His Jewish brothers and sisters. And they were the religious leaders of that day. But then, Jesus also talked to the people. Now think about this. He fed 5,000 people. 
He was looking for something. And all they could think of is, man, we got to go back and see that guy so we can have our tummies filled again. That was good food. I don't know how he did that with those few fish and, and loaves of bread, but we were all filled and we were satisfied. He came and he healed their sick. And they came to him in droves for him to heal their sick. And he loved them. He preached a sermon on the mount to them. And they said, whoa, he speaks as one having authority. And you can see Jesus saying, maybe, just maybe, they got what I'm looking for. I find it ironic. They wanted to make him king. They thought that much of him. One day, they're singing Hosanna to him. Hail the king of the Jews. And a couple days later, they're saying, crucify him. He's a traitor. He's a blasphemer. Can you imagine the disappointment in Jesus? But that's what they were doing. They wanted him crucified. And they even went further than that. They said, give us that murderer and that person that has caused terror in all of Jerusalem. Put him free. And let this man who came preaching peace, let him hang on the tree. I don't know. But he talked to his apostles. He had 12 of them. And time and time again, he had to shake his head. He couldn't understand why they weren't getting it. The reason they weren't getting it is because they were missing a key ingredient. But every so often, every so often, he found it. You know, Jesus would go out and he'd walk along and, and whoever came to him, he would talk with them. You know, the, the, the woman at the well, she's a Samaritan. He still talked to her. He shared with her the truth about life. He shared with her that he was the Christ. And she was so excited. She went into, into the city and she brought droves of people. Oh, come see if I, haven't seen, if I haven't met the Messiah. She was excited. But he would do that. And he'd walk along and if Gentiles came up to him, he would talk to them. And it was strange. Because as he talked to some of the Gentiles, he found what he was looking for. Now, I don't know about you, but that would be strange. Because Jesus came thinking he would find it amongst his people, the Jews. But he had a difficult time finding it. He found it sometimes, a little bit here and there. But for the most part, he didn't find it. But then he talked to Gentiles, and they had it. The Samaritan woman had it. But it had to be strange. Have you ever looked for something and found it in a strange place? That's what it would have been like. You know, when I look for my um, jump drive for my computer, the first place I'd look is not the garbage. Because most likely I'm not throwing it in the garbage. I put it on my desk somewhere, or I put it in a tray on my desk, or put it somewhere. And then I find it laying on the floor in the auditorium here. That's strange. It shouldn't be there. And that's kind of what was going on with Jesus. He's saying, I found this in the strangest places. But he was overjoyed when he found it. In fact, he would remark with praise almost like out of shock that he found it there. You know, um, I read a story to this week about a lady scuba diver. She, she had gotten into trouble and, and um, she was unconscious. And so they called in the medevac to, to take her and fly her to the hospital. And this is down in the States. And I don't know how they do it here exactly, but it would have been like Star's Ambulance, right? And so they get over there with the helicopter and they, they stabilize her. They get her on the helicopter, and everybody down there on the helicopter has to wear a helmet on the helicopter. 
So you can imagine, here they are with a helmet and a face shield on, and they got their gloves on, and they got their uniforms on or whatever, and, and this lady, as they're flying her, wakes up. And she's a little bit dazed and not sure where she's disoriented, right? And she starts kicking and fighting. And the two, two paramedics are holding her down and they can hardly do it. And they land the helicopter and they take their helmets off. And she went, oh, you're human. <laughs> I guess maybe she, she thought she was abducted or something by aliens. But, but it, it was a shock. And you can imagine Jesus being shocked where he found this missing ingredient that he was looking for. Now, I don't know, maybe you figured it out, but what was it that Jesus was looking for that he never found amongst his people? In Matthew chapter 23 and verse 23, Jesus is admonishing the Pharisees, the religious leaders of the day. And he says, congratulations, and I'm paraphrasing this. He says, you tithed your mint and your dill and your cumin. He said, great. But he said, you missed something. You missed the weightier matters. Mercy, justice, and faithfulness. Now I want you to understand something. The Pharisees lived the word of God that they had, the law. They lived it in their mind at least to the nth degree. They did all the things, the tithes, the giving, the, all the things that they were required to do, the sacrifices. But there was a problem. Their faith wasn't in God. Their heart wasn't there. It was just going through the motions. And they had missed the boat on that. And that's what Jesus points out to them. He said, you forgot faithfulness. In Mark chapter 4 and verse 40, the, 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 the apostles are on the boat with Jesus. They're out in the middle of the sea. There's a storm happening. I mean, there's waves coming up over the edge of the boat. And, and you and I included would be going, yikes, what are we in for? We'd be afraid. And the apostles were afraid. And Jesus says the most interesting thing to them that I think, I, I, I still look at this and go, really? He must have spent some time with them already. He had expected to see something in them. And he says, have you still no faith? You know, we could ask ourselves the same question. When we get caught in the storms of life, in the life that we're living, things don't go the way we like them to go, or things go wrong, how do you react? Do you get afraid? Do you flip out? Do you wonder what you're going to do? Or do you put your faith in God? And you say, God's still taking care of everything. No matter how this turns out, I'm going to be right with God. I'm going to be okay. Even if I die, I'm going to be okay. See, that's faith. That's what Jesus was looking for. And none of them had that. You know, in Mark chapter 9, and verse 19, they, Jesus has been up on the Mount of Transfiguration. And he comes down. Of course, they had a problem. They couldn't cast out the demon that was in this child that was brought to them. And they had been doing some of that. So I'm sure they were thinking, oh, we can handle this situation, no problem. And uh, so they, Jesus comes down, and his comment to them is, Oh, faithless generation. Now think about that. They were trying to do the work of God. They were trying to cast out that demon. But my thinking is, my understanding is, that they weren't really thinking they were doing it by the power of God. They were thinking they were doing it. And their faith wasn't in God. And Jesus said, this kind only comes out by faith and prayer. In other words, you've got to acknowledge that God's the one that does it, not you. 
And you see, we can get caught up just as easy as all those people that had no faith. But I want you to, I don't want to end on that. I want to end on this. We need to look at what that faith looks like. In Matthew chapter 9, Jesus is talking to the Pharisees. And you can imagine they're in, the ho- in this house. And all of a sudden, the sun shines through. That's not supposed to happen. There's a roof on this house. But all of a sudden, there's a hole. And down through that hole comes this cot with, the, with a paralytic on it. That's the only way they could get this paralytic in front of Jesus to heal him. And so they did it. And Jesus saw their faith. He said, now that's faith. They will go to that degree to get that person in front of me to be healed. That's faith. They, you know, that's a lot of work to take, cut a hole in the roof, dig a hole and have enough guys up on that roof and the roof's still stable enough to lower that guy down and, and, and all of that. That's a lot of work. You wouldn't do that if you didn't have faith. And so he said, man, they got faith. Not like these Pharisees I've been talking to that just want to kill me. They have no faith. That's their problem. And so these people demonstrated their faith. The centurion in Matthew chapter 8, verses 5 through 10. He comes to Jesus, and Jesus, he, he says, man, my, my, I got somebody sick back home and needs healing. And, and Jesus said, man... You, all you guys want is signs, another sign, another sign. He said, no. He said, no. He's really sick, and I know you can heal him. And Jesus said, okay, come on, let's go. And he said, no, 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 no. He said, I'm a master too. I have servants under me. He says, I recognize you're the master. You're the master of masters. And he said, all you got to do is speak the word, and he'll be fine. I know that. And Jesus said something that must have shocked every Jew that lived that day. He said, I have not found such faith in all of Israel. Now, the Pharisees are looking at him like, what are you talking about? You just put us down. The people are saying, what? You're saying we don't have that faith? And he said, yes, I'm saying that because I see by your actions that you don't have faith. This man, by his actions, showed his faith. John chapter 4 and verse 50. Same, similar situation, maybe the same centurion. Comes to Jesus. Jesus says, go home, he's well. And he took Jesus at his word and went home. That's faith. That's what faith is all about. And faith was the missing ingredient that the Jews, or is the ingredient that the Jews were missing. Faith was what Jesus was looking for, and he couldn't find. In Luke chapter 18 and verse 8, Jesus pondered. He said, when the Son of Man comes, Will he find faith on earth? What if Jesus came right now? What if Jesus just came here right now? Would he find faith in here? Or would he find more faith in those people out there? What would he find? Will he find faith on earth? Is faith, is, some, is faith an ingredient that maybe more times than not you're missing in your life? How are you demonstrating your faith? You know, I, I'm going to give you an offer this morning that you can't refuse. If you don't have faith in Jesus this morning, you need to put your faith in Jesus. Because without faith in Jesus, you're going nowhere. But Jesus says, put your faith in me. You can trust me. And I will give you life. You will have the forgiveness of sins. You will have life eternal. All you need to do 
is obey me. Be immersed into me for the forgiveness of your sins. Be raised to walk a newness of life, a life of faith. And so if we can serve you here this morning in any way, we invite you to come forward now while we stand and sing. Okay. 